Hi, in this video I'm going to tell you about the uh, Storyteller decks, which are decks of cards that you can use for creative writing prompts. As you can see, I have four decks in front of me. We have images and questions, genres, themes and objects, conflicts, goals and motivations, and object, characters and situations. Each of these decks has a unique set of cards that you can shuffle and combine any way you like to create creative writing prompts. So I'm going to show you the cards in the decks now. We'll start uh, with the first one. You open the box uh, with a hook on the back like this. You unfold it. And there we have the cards. Now each deck has its own unique set of cards uh, and there's different types. You can see that from the back here. Uh, this is images and questions. The color shows you which uh, deck the cards uh, came from. So in this case, the blue deck, which is images and questions. And on the uh, front of the cards, we have in this case, uh, a whole bunch of different questions that you can apply to scenes, as well as images of a whole range of different art styles. So the idea with this deck is that you shuffle the cards into two separate decks. and then draw a card from each one. So we'll start with an image, two adorable little pigs, and then a question, what happened immediately after? Now you can see on the question card that this is a generic question. There are three types. We also have conflict uh, questions. In this case, what is a feeling you do not associate with the scene? And what happens when someone enters it with that feeling? And there is also the third one, let's find one. Here, mystery questions. What is something supernatural going on here, for example? Any of these questions should, in theory, work with any of the image cards. You can get some really interesting combinations sometimes. And what you would do is just you would look at the image, you would answer the question, and then you will start writing or telling your story. It's that easy. So what about the other three decks? Well, let's take a look at those. We have the second deck, which is the green one, genres, themes, and objects. Let's open that one and take a look at the cards. It opens in the same way with a little hook on the back. And here we have the cards. In this one, there are actually four types of cards. We have primary genres, which are different kinds of uh, story genres, like adventure, crime, and so on. Then we have secondary genres or subgenres, which would be these ones, uh, Western, true story, and so on. And next we have themes, which are these ones. They are different types of themes that you would commonly see in stories like redemption, sexual awakening, love, politics, and so on. You can apply those to any kind of uh, story that you're writing. And finally, we have the objects. Here are some objects. Let's give a few examples of those. These are images of different objects that you can uh, incorporate in a story. So like a shopping list, a stack of cash, a bikini, a sword, a map, and so on. Now, the idea with the second deck, the green one, is that you take uh, all of the different types of cards, you shuffle them into separate piles. Let's place them in order. We have primary genres, subgenres, objects, and themes. So what you would do is you draw a genre. So in this case, fairy tale, subgenre, werewolf, a werewolf fairy tale, with an object, a drone, mm -hmm, and a theme. Mental health in this case. Maybe a bit of an odd combination, but you get the idea. You can draw any kind of combination here and you will have a story prompt to write or tell your story based from. Themes, of course, are something that your characters would go through. It could be their, uh, related to their goal in the story or whatever motivates them. You can also use some of these cards on their own or the types of cards. For example, a classic uh, writing prompt is to do just a series of objects. You would write the story, including a drone, a box of fruit and a surfboard. That could be one option. You can also go through the uh, genres and subgenres and find some really interesting combinations. A steampunk thriller, an alien romance, and so on. Let's move on to the third deck, which is conflicts, goals, and motivations. Let's open that one. Here we have the cards. 
Now in this one, this one is a bit special because all the cards are text cards. And I will show you why in a moment. We have goals, which is with this icon on the back. Motivations, which have a star icon on the back. And conflicts, which have this kind of little explosion on the back. Now let's see what we do with these cards. We're gonna lay them out into three separate stacks. We're gonna take one of each one, so a goal, travel to a land far away, a motivation, it can advance their career, and a conflict, there's a guard by the entrance. So what you would do in this case is you would put these into a sentence. So their goal is to travel to a land far away because it can advance their career, but there is a guard by the entrance. Now you can use this as a prompt in its own to write a story based on this, but you can also apply these cards to characters, for example, in your novel, or if you're already writing a short story or something, uh, you can use them to flesh out your characters. You can build character profiles using these cards to flesh out your characters in a bigger story, or you can Focus on just one of the types of cards. For example, the conflict cards are great if you're just looking to uh, for inspirations for scenes. So let's try, try looking at some of the other ones. Uh, someone has discovered their plan and wants to stop them. No one is available to help. They realize they're about to make a huge mistake and so on. It could be a lot of uh, different variations here. And just changing one of the cards actually changes the whole sentence or the whole setup of this prompt. Now there is one special type of card I want to find among all of these. Uh, here is a good example. You see this is a motivation card, but it says conflict down here. That's because this card could actually be used as a conflict instead. So if you draw this one, uh, now the sentence will be travel to a land far away because they need money, but they realize they're about to make a huge mistake. It's a good setup. Uh, but this one could technically be moved to uh, be a conflict card instead in which case we draw either draw a new motivation card or we can just use this one that was already there. Travel to a land far away because they will be killed if they don't, uh, but they need money to do so. So that's how the uh, conflict goals and motivation cards work. Now let's take a look at the final deck, which is the uh, characters, objects and situations. So this is actually my favorite among all of these four and you will see why soon. I think it's quite funny this one. There we go. So in this one we have situations. I will show you some examples straight away. These are text cards. Uh, who that must be stopped, used as a weapon, about to be taken on an adventure, and so on. Let's put these aside. We have more situations here. Situations have a little eye icon on the back. There we go. Next up we have the characters, which are images of uh, characters, for example, an ant, a lion, a princess, a mime, an explorer, a god, a truck driver, a boss, and so on. And finally, we have objects similar to what we saw in the uh, green box. The uh, You can see the icon is the same here on the green and the purple uh, deck. Uh, the objects are, again, images of different objects, so a school bus, a wedding ring, a phone, a submarine, and so on. And what you would do with this deck is you would take uh, these three types of cards. You would draw one object, a painting, one character, a father, and two situations. No one is allowed to touch and who or that is afraid to speak. And then you would pair them. So one situation with uh, the character and one with the painting. So a father who is afraid to speak up, sounds good. And a painting no one is allowed to touch. That's a really good pairing. Now that you have two pairings here, you will tell a story that incorporates these two things. Now the reason I like this deck so much is because you can easily just replace something. So let's take a new character and replace the father and see what happens. A criminal who is afraid to speak up. That's also a good combination. This completely changes what this story could be about. Uh, we could also have two objects instead, a bomb, that is afraid to speak up. In this case, you would have to apply human emotions and feelings to the bomb, give it some characteristics of a human. But that works as well, because maybe the bomb is about to explode and uh, it wants to say something, but it can't or is afraid to in this case. Uh, let's do another character here. 
A mine worker no one is allowed to touch. An astronaut no one is allowed to touch. This could mean a whole world of different things. And you can also easily just replace the situations. A bomb thrown in a river, for example, or an astronaut who once belonged to a historical figure. So there you have it. That's uh, what the storyteller decks are. Now you can, of course, also combine uh, elements from all of them. So I will show you a bigger setup now. Just give me a moment to set it up for you. All right, I have now set up all of the decks here, um, all of the story elements from the Storyteller decks, and we're going to see what we can come up with. I think we should start with the genre cards because a uh, genre is, of course, uh, central to any story. So let's see what we can get here. Uh, we have fantasy, and let's do a sub-genre as well, detective. So we're going to write a or tell a fantasy detective story. Uh, let's see from the images if we get something there that fits with this. This looks to be, what do we have here? It's a girl with some, looks some, like some magic. There's some flying books. She's in her library. Okay, this could be a scene or a character in our story. Uh, a question to apply to that card. He doesn't love her, so why did he tell her that he does? Okay, this is uh, something that uh, this girl is going to have to deal with in the story. Uh, next, because these are the conflicts, goals, and motivations are for specific characters, so they work best if you apply them to a character, I'm thinking we should draw some characters here, or at least one character, one object, and two themes to apply here. So let's see what we got. We have a witch, we have a musical instrument, and the two situations are uh, in an unexpected place, and who or that can only be used by the chosen one. I'm thinking this belongs to the uh, musical instrument. It's a musical instrument that can only be used by the chosen one. And a witch in an unexpected place. And then finally we're going to draw a um, goal that we can apply either to any of the characters that we have in here or to a random one that we come up with related to this bigger story that we're about to tell. The goal is to sell a horse. I don't know if a witch would sell a horse. Maybe this girl would uh, sell a horse. She looks like somebody who could like horses. Uh, why does she want to do that? She wants to do it because everyone they know will die if they don't. Okay, this took an unexpectedly dark turn. And finally, a conflict, something bad that will happen in the story. They're hopelessly incompetent and doesn't know how to do it. Okay, <laughs> so the little girl here who has been told by somebody that he loves her, but who was lied to, uh, is going to sell a horse in our story. Because if she doesn't, a lot of people will die. Something horrible will happen. Uh, but she is apparently hopelessly incompetent and doesn't know how to do it, how to sell a horse. At some point in the story, there will be a witch in an unexpected place. That could be a twist somewhere in the story. There will be a musical instrument uh, that can only be used by the chosen one. I'm thinking maybe the girl is the chosen one. She seems to be the main character of this story. The story will be a fantasy story uh, with a detective element. So maybe the girl is going on a quest or something. I just realized we're missing two things actually. We're missing the object from here. So in this story we're also going to incorporate a puzzle piece. And the central theme to the story should be jealousy. These two actually fit quite well, I think, with what we already have. Uh, maybe the girl is jealous. There is a love story here uh, that needs to be told. The puzzle beast, is, if she's going on a quest, uh, she's on a detective journey, she might find a clue somewhere. That's how I interpret this. And yeah, there you have it. Now you can come up with a story, write or tell a short story, or even uh, use all of this to expand your novel or whatever you're working on. So there you have it. That's how you use the storyteller decks for your creative writing prompts. And I hope that you enjoy these decks and the cards in them. Everything you, all the potential in what you can do with them. If you want to get one of these, I will leave a link in the description of this video. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching.